thank you very much, uh, Professor Makanya, the principal and vice chancellor of uh, UNISA, and thanks for your very kind introduction. Perhaps for those who do not know, UNISA is our biggest university. It has got 35% of all of our university students in South Africa. Uh, program Director uh, Professor Singh, Minister of Research and Innovation and of Training Colleges and University in Ontario, Canada, Dr. Reza Moridi, President of ICDE, Dr. Tian Belawati and your executive, President of the ACDE, Professor Primrose Kurasha, and your executive, the General Secretary of the ICDE, Mr. Gart Teitelstad, Mr. Maxine Jean-Louis, Professor Tracy McMillan Cotton, members of the International Council on Distance Education, distinguished guests, researchers and academics, all the participants, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I'm really honored to address you today at the opening of the 26th International Council on Distance Education Conference, which is the first conference of its kind to be hosted in our continent. The next few days will provide an important platform for engaging on the theme, Growing Capacities for Sustainable Distance E-Learning Provision a very important theme indeed. I'm sure that you as delegates, as experts, as academics, and practitioners from across the globe will have the opportunity to engage on many critical issues related to open and distance learning. I wish to take this opportunity to congratulate UNISA, Professor Makanya, your council, as host of this historic and important conference. It is also an important and significant historical coincidence that this conference takes place a few weeks after the adoption of the Sustainable Development Goals, the SDGs, by the United Nations General Assembly as its vision for development over the next 15 years. Of even more significance is that Unlike the previous Millennium Development Goals, the MDGs, that focused mainly on access to basic and school education, the SDGs are correctly also focusing on access to what in South Africa we refer to as post-school education and training, including access to vocational, adult, and university education. This is even more important for our continent, the African continent, in that this will create opportunities for Africa not only to be a consumer of knowledge produced somewhere else, as was the case in the past when Africa was told that all we have to do is to focus on primary education and forget about all else, but now, with also this emphasis on post-school education, Africa also will make its own contribution towards innovation and generation of new knowledge. Education plays a key role in the social, political, and economic development of the world. We need accessible, affordable, and cost-effective cost post-school system that can service millions of people, including adults and youth, with education of high quality. We need to provide equal opportunities for education and training, expand opportunities for people in disadvantaged areas, expand opportunities for youth in particular, increase access and improve quality and diversity. The vision in our own South African post-school education and training policy paper, we focus on building a post-school system 
that can assist in building a fair, equitable, non-racial, non-sexist, and democratic South Africa. And this policy framework sets out a guide for a coherent and integrated post-school landscape, which commits our government to open wide the doors of learning to the young and old, employed and unemployed. The SDGs, together with these other commitments, require that we must expand distance education, especially given the huge lack of resources and investment into education infrastructure in a continent like ours and in many other developing countries. In other words, as Professor Makanya has said, the world is not going to, as well as the president of the ICDE, by the way, also makes this point. The world is not going to make meaningful advances towards the realization of something like the SDGs unless we make full use of distance education, including e-learning. Hence the significance of this conference for the, S for the SDGs, a matter that I hope you will reflect upon. In general, the quality of education needs to be improved, and the post-school sector in particular should focus on providing quality learning opportunities for young persons and adults especially also for those who never completed their secondary education, but who wish to actually uh, improve themselves. In South Africa, for example, it is clear that given the, the current infrastructure backlogs, we are not going to meet our goals of expanding opportunities for post-school education unless we make effective use of distance and especially e-education. Further, there is increasing evidence that many of our students, particularly those at coming from historically or former black universities under apartheid, have great difficulty in attending full-time classes as they have a range of paid and unpaid work commitments. For many students, the notion of attending classes all day is simply not possible. And we know that many people who are in full-time employment yearn for opportunities to increase their job-related skills and knowledge as well as simply to broaden their education for its own sake. I don't know whether this is the case in other countries. We now have a very interesting experience with our UNISA. UNISA historically was meant for people who are working, who want to improve their acquired degrees, diplomas, or certificates through correspondence. But because of the expensive nature of contact universities, UNISA finds itself now having de facto full-time students who cannot afford to go to a contact university, can, but can somehow afford to register at UNISA and be able in the meantime to do odd jobs. So the age range of UNISA now increasingly is beginning to look like your contact universities. That's a new challenge that I suppose we have to deal with. I don't know what the situation would be in other countries. Distance education and open learning can provide access to students for whom, as I have said, traditional full-time opportunities are not available. The expansion of distance and contact education will help to expand access, increase flexibility, cut costs, and improve quality. However, what I've just said now about the importance of expanding distance education, we must also do this carefully and with detailed planning in order to ensure that in the process, quality is not sacrificed. Distance provisioning will require a comprehensive ICT infrastructure for all public post-school institutions, professional development programs for staff in various aspects of open distance learning, 
establishing dedicated distance capacity, for instance, for technical vocational education and training and adult education, and the creation of a network of distance education providers and of shared learning and support centers to provide administrative and logistical support. This is even more important given the reality that distance education in any developing country often has a very high failure rate because of lack of contact, especially for students in rural areas. Most importantly, the quality assurance of distance education must be strengthened. Distance provision cannot expand significantly until better retention, success, and throughput rates can be assured. Continued research into the factors affecting the dropout, stop out, and failure rates need to take place and be acted upon in order to ensure success. In relation to program development, programs need to be sustainable, fit for purpose, appropriately resourced, and address developmental priorities. In our case as South Africa, we intend to interact very closely with our relevant quality and professional councils in order to strengthen the quality of distance programs. Distance education provision must be complemented by improved national and institutional planning and program design and increase support. Now, we are also of the view that it is essential to allow for more students especially those from rural areas, to the use of appropriate technology and create an enabling environment for appropriate integration of ICT to enhance distance education provision in both universities and other post-schooling institutions. Professor Makanya is right. Much as our focus may be universities, but it's very important that we cast a wider eye into the entire post-school education and training sector. We need to ensure, therefore, that post-schooling students has reasonable, have reasonable access to affordable connectivity. To facilitate the expansion of distance education, collaboration between post-school institutions is essential. For instance, the development of something like multi-purpose community centers as shared learning and support centers has the potential to be a shared resource for the post-school sector. In South Africa, we are increasingly thinking about what we call multi-purpose educational centers, where you would be offering a variety of type of programs in one site, whether it's literacy, whether it's vocational or adult education, including university offerings, in order to maximize the use of existing infrastructure given the huge demand that countries like ours have. So the collaborative development of shared high quality learning programs and resources and use of open educational resources are encouraged. Our department, for instance, will pursue the adoption or adaptation of an appropriate open licensing framework for use by all university stakeholders. Teaching and learning grants will be tailored to encourage collaborative development and use of open educational resources. The successful expansion of quality distance provisioning to enable access and success requires active participation by all stakeholders in the post-school system. The role of this conference in promoting and creating awareness about open and distance learning provision will assist in strengthening the capacity of researchers, academics, and institutions to improve on the quality of delivery of education. Building an expanded, effective, and integrated post-school system requires proper planning and collaboration, as I have said. Therefore, we're looking forward to the outcomes of this conference, and may I also take this opportunity not only to welcome you, but to also say, please provide yourself some time to enjoy this area and the wildlife. And we are most welcome 
in South Africa, I could see also even the opening. That was really, truly South African performance. Enjoy yourselves, and you are most welcome to our wonderful country. Thank you very much.